Ladies and gentlemen, videos like this take a metric crap ton of time to make, and seeing as this video doesn't have a sponsor, I humbly ask that you guys be my sponsor for today's video. If you could leave a like, maybe subscribe if you're new, and drop a comment, it'll go a long way to support the content as the YouTube algorithm thrives on stuff like that for a video to perform well. Anyways, thank you for listening, and without further ado, let's jump into it. As you could probably tell by the title and thumbnail, today we're going to be doing a stasis weapon tier list for Destiny 2 PvE. And you guys can give thanks to Dorian for requesting this during one of my live streams here on YouTube. We'll be going over every last stasis weapon inside D2, legendary or exotic, and place them in any of the tiers you see on screen here. And just to give you guys a little refresher on how I view each tier, Trash tier will feature weapons that are, you know, trash, not really worth using in 99% of circumstances. D tier will feature weapons that I clarify as bad, like they're usable, but I'd never willingly use any weapon here. C tier will feature overall mediocre weapons. These weapons are neither bad nor good, they're just the kind of middle of the pack weapons. B tier is the general good weapon tier. If a weapon pops up in B, it's an overall good weapon and might be worth farming depending on the use. Next up, we have A tier, which features great weapons. These weapons are phenomenal and just about everybody should be using them. And lastly, we have holy shit, you cannot miss out on these weapons. They're absolute must haves across the board. And with that out of the way, we'll be discussing these weapons in alphabetical order, meaning that Agar Scepter is up first. And this might be controversial, but I will be placing this weapon into the S tier. And yeah, you heard me right. Agars is one of the most slept on exotics I have ever seen, and one of the only trace rifles that isn't divinity that's worth using in in-game content. This exotic quite literally has it all. It has the exotic perk Agar's Call, which states, final blows with this weapon generate a slowing burst around the defeated target. This essentially just means that every time you kill an enemy, it'll freeze those around it. It also has built-in subsistence via the Rega's Refrain perk, which works on Stasis Final Blows. And looking at the catalyst, we're given an alternate fire mode that allows us to convert our super energy into a beam that's going to overflow the magazine and give it a massive damage boost, allowing you to melt down even the beefiest of targets. You take all of what I told you, then take into consideration that trace rifles were buffed earlier this year to deal 20% extra damage specifically to non-red bars, as well as having their ammo per brick nearly doubled. And you have yourself an exotic that can add clear via slowing and freezing, which is going to play into every stasis build under the sun. It also allows you to melt extremely high health bars when in a pinch, and it also can substitute as a primary weapon with subsistence if you're wanting to run a double special loadout thanks to the ammo buff. Aggers is outright insane, an exotic that can quite literally do it all, so feel free to disagree, but I 100% feel it deserves that S tier spot. Moving down a tier from Agar Scepter, we find ourselves with one of the newest weapons in D2, the A tier Blood Feud from Plunder. I'll be honest, I didn't really like this weapon too much at first, but after I crafted my own and paired it with a stasis build, I quickly changed my mind as after I got the right stat boost and perks, it felt phenomenal. This SMG is going to need a little bit of love in the stat department as things like range and reload could definitely use a bit of a bump, but due to it being craftable, you'll be able to tweak this weapon to your perfect liking, no problem. Blood Feud is at its best when you just treat it like a regular SMG as far as perks go, go with Ambitious Assassin or Pugilist in the first column, and instead of Headstone, just Rock Frenzy and that's going to serve you fine, as you can just reap the benefits of it being Stasis in other ways like pairing it with Exotics or Well Builds. So taking a look at my Stasis Warlock build for example, I'm able to run a Font of Might build thanks to Elemental Shards, converting Shards to Wells. To make that happen in the first place, I make sure to run the Grim Harvest Aspect so that freezing targets will drop me those Stasis Shards and those I can make with my stasis turrets as well as my melee, which thanks to Pugilus on Blood Feud, I'll be getting it back all the time, meaning my Font of Might buff can almost be a constant thing on top of Frenzy giving me more damage and reload and everything else I got going on. When this is all done, you essentially have a buffed up version of the Ikelos SMG or Extraordinary Rendition that you can keep beefing up with damage constantly through the build you create. Try it out sometime, you'll absolutely love this thing. Now that we've talked about both a special and primary weapon, let's complete the trifecta by moving on to the heavy slot. And here we have the bump in the night, which I'll be placing in the B tier. Honestly, this haunted rocket has a huge amount of potential right now given that it's an aggressive frame that has chill clip, but unfortunately the rocket meta that we saw back in Witch Queen's launch is just kind of gone. The only area of the game that I even think to use rockets in is at the daughter's encounter of King's Fall with Galahorn, and that's about it. 
I know that Izanagi Rocket is still fairly popular and is used to bake bosses like War Priest, but given how low the base handling stat is for this rocket launcher, paired with the fact that Hothead gets Clown Cartridge, which just synergizes better with Galley, Bump in the Night just ends up in a weird spot. Overall, I think it's a good weapon, hence the B tier placement, but it probably won't find popularity until we find ourselves at a shift in the meta come future updates. Up next, I kind of want to break the alphabetical order rule just this once, as I'm going to pair the next three weapons together, since they're also very similar. Of course, I'm talking about these Stasis Fusion Rifles, and I'll be placing Burden of Guilt in the C tier, Deliverance in the B tier, and Riptide in A tier. Starting with Burden, which is the gameplay you'll be watching for this segment since it's the only chill clip fusion I have, while it's overall a decent option, it doesn't really have the perk set to fully play into its strengths. Being honest, the only time you pick up a stasis fusion is to use chill clip alongside it, and the best perk that Burden can muster up to pair with chill clip is perpetual motion and maybe stats for all, but that's just awkward to take advantage of on a fusion rifle. Pair that with needing to play Trials to even get this fusion to begin with, and it's not that much of an appealing option. But what is an appealing option is the Deliverance. This fusion comes from Vow the Disciple, making it craftable, which is tons more user friendly for those trying to get a god roll. It can roll with Compulsive Reloader Chill Clip, which is the perfect synergy to take advantage of the Chill Clip perk, but it can also get Demolitionist in that first column as well. You can freeze and kill enemies with Chill Clip, get Grenade Energy, throw a grenade that's going to reload your weapon. You know, it's definitely a fun gameplay loop to be had there, and overall this fusion is just a massive upgrade over the Burden and just about every way. Now lastly we have the Riptide which does come from Crucible but the upside to it is that it has a fantastic perk pool that can support Chill Clip as well as it being a rapid fire frame which is the strongest archetype among PvE fusion rifles. Taking a look at the perks, you have options like Auto Loading Holster, Lead from Gold, Feeding Frenzy, Compulsive Reloader, and my favorite, which is Fueled Prep. This is essentially Compulsive Reloader that you can proc any time just by crouching, and it also increases your reserves, ensuring that you'll be using Chill Clip much more often. That combined with its great archetype seals the deal as it being the best Chill Clip fusion, but Deliverance will remain much more player friendly given how you can guarantee the god roll with enough playing. Onward from our chilliest of clip friends, let's talk about our next heavy weapon of the video, the B tier Chain of Command Ritual Weapon. Now this is honestly another pretty slept on weapon overall, but definitely not slept on to the point of me putting in an S tier like Aggers. More so slept on in the sense that it's a machine gun that brings something to the table that no other machine gun can, and that is adaptive munitions. Overall, I think this weapon is best used in a fire team by a div user inside match game content. It allows the player to fully spec into that support role by covering overloads, creating crit bubbles and debuffing targets, as well as having a heavy weapon that can pop any shield of enemy regardless of the situation. Outside of that, you can just ignore the perk entirely and play around with Adrenaline Junkie demo, or even a quirky Osmosis demo build, but that said, if you're using the gun in a more traditional manner, Corrective Measure completely has it beat out, so I recommend using it more so to its strengths and getting the most out of it. Chain of Command might not be meta defining, but it still has a place in the PvE sandbox as a very unique option even if it only makes a difference in a very few scenarios. Making our way back to the second exotic for today's video, we find ourselves at the Cryosthesia 77k sidearm, and I'll be placing it in the A tier. Honestly, this sidearm just feels downright amazing in every way, and I'm an idiot and I don't even have the catalyst unlocked, which single-handedly unlocks the weapon's true gameplay loop. Taking a look at the base weapon, we have an alternate firing mode called LN2 Burst, which allows you to fire a charged shot that'll instantly freeze any targets in the radius. Think of it as a dusk field grenade, but it instantly freezes everything in the bubble the second it's thrown. Now combine that charged shot with the catalyst, which grants cold efficiency, and this is going to state that shattering a frozen target will refill the magazine. You then find yourself in a gameplay loop of killing enemies, charging your shot, freezing enemies, shattering them, and instantly having more ammo at your disposal, meaning meaning you'll never have to reload. Now like I said, me being an idiot, I don't have the catalyst and therefore you'll be seeing me reload quite a bit in the background footage, but just imagine that I'm not, and you'll understand that this weapon is truly a gem. See guys, I can be nice to sidearms on very rare occasions, they just have to be good, and Cryosthesia is a damn good weapon if you ask me. Up next we have a weapon that I'm sure you are all waiting for, and that is the IS Luna, which of course, as you all knew, is going in the S tier. Coming from the Grasp of Avarice dungeon, Ice Luna made an immediate splash in the eyes of many players as soon as they discovered the combo of Unrelenting Headstone and the synergy that comes with it. 
Basically, have you put yourself in a dangerous situation and you're surrounded by enemies? Simply pop one of their heads off to proc headstone, shoot the stasis crystal they form, wipe out any nearby combatants with that stasis crystal, and immediately heal to full health. Ice Luna being a 140 RPM and having some of the best stats I think I've ever seen on a hand cannon definitely helps too, but that perk combination is simply insane and is used by just about any player out there. Except for me, because I'm not lucky enough to get it, so I have Outlaw Headstone, forever in pain. Following up on Ayas Luna, we have one of the first ever weapons that I decided to level up via weapon crafting, and that is the Forensic Nightmare, which I'll be placing in the B tier. Overall, Nightmare is a good SMG, but it finds its shortcomings in the form of its archetype, base stats, as well as perk combinations. For starters, it's a 600 RPM SMG, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it has none of the benefits that you'd like to see from such an SMG. Things like good zoom, base range, etc. Compared to Shy Uras, which can feel like an auto rifle at times, Forensic Nightmare has abysmal zoom, combined with less overall range on top of that, and even a slower reload speed. Take that into consideration alongside the fact that the best first column perks that it has are Grave Robber, Perpetual Motion, and Slideways for you to combine Headstone with, and you'll see why I'm not too big on this thing. Going the Grave Robber Swash route with Forensic just wouldn't feel great given the RPM being that up close, which leaves us with mostly specking into Headstone via Perpetual Motion. This isn't really a bad thing, but overall rocking Headstone would feel much better had Forensic had the zoom and range to back it up for hitting those headshots at longer ranges, as well as a better reload perk like Subsistence or something else. Still, it's an overall good SMG that I'll keep in the B tier, but if this weapon does get some more competition in future seasons, I'll probably end up backing it into C tier. Up next, we're going to briefly talk about one of our only trash tier weapons for the video, the Fractithist Shotgun. This weapon dropped back in Season of the Lost, and although it's not obtainable anymore, you're not really missing out on much, at least if you're a PvE player. The perks are just awful on this thing, combined with pellet shotguns already not being that amazing. Trench Barrel Lead from Gold is the best combo you'll get, but there's never a time where I could see myself getting any use out of this gun, so into the trash tier it goes. Ironically, moving on from Fractithist, we have the Hair Rod C, which is going into the C tier. This weapon drops from Gambit matches, and it unfortunately is a victim to the archetype that it's in. Herod actually rolls with some amazing perks in both columns, but high impact frame auto rifles come with a cost, and that's being labeled as mid no matter how good the perks are. While getting footage with this weapon for the video, I found it quite fun to use, especially when specking into stasis builds, but putting it any higher than C tier would just be too generous. If we do see a buff to this archetype in the future though, which I really am holding out that Bungie does, because they've been underwhelming for a while, Herod C could easily be B, maybe A tier. While on the topic of auto rifles, let's take a look at the other side of the spectrum and go from mid to amazing. Here in the A tier, we have the Crate. The 720 Auto single-handedly just about carries the kinetic slot for auto rifles, as it has that stasis synergy on top of a top-tier origin trait in the form of Vice Stinger, as well as godlike perks that keep it company. I've always been a really big fan of 720s, they remain my favorite auto archetype in the game, and Crate showed up with Witch Queen as a top-tier option right out the gate. You can farm it via Umbrals at the helm, so if you don't have it yet, try your hand at focusing the Viced Engrams. Other than that though, not too much else to be said, Crate is just downright amazing. So climbing our way back into the S tier once more, let's talk about the next weapon in today's video, the Lingering Dread. This duality grenade launcher hit the community by storm when it released, and is crowned as the best breachlight GL in the game hands down. It remains the only special GL that can roll with chill clip, giving it a form of crowd control even when using a spike nade setup. And you can provide additional ways to keep you and your teammates safe from ads when using blinding nades. Either way you go, offensive or defensive, Lingering Dread has the role for you. For a more offensive playstyle, Ambitious Assassin and Chill Clip puts in absolute work, but you could also go with Demo in that final column for even more explosions to aid you in combat. For playing defensively, Auto-Loading Chill Clip is just an absolute powerhouse god roll that will 100% ensure that adds will not be a problem for you and your teammates when in a pinch. Although these kinds of GLs don't get as much use now thanks to how meta waveframes are, Lingering Dread is still the best among its peers while also having very unique quirks that can't be replicated, and I think that's deserving of an S tier ranking. Up next, let's take a deep dive from S all the way back down to C and talk about the Lunalata 4B. 
This world loot bow is the first stasis bow we've ever seen, and it's pretty underwhelming overall. Its best perk combinations come in the form of shoot to loot headstone, and I don't know why you'd use headstone on a weapon like a bow, when Ice Luna is available with a much higher RPM, which is going to allow you to pop heads faster and detonate those crystals faster as well. We have options of Adrenaline Junkie and Golden Tricorn as well, but I don't really see those working out all that well here on the bow either, so Lunalata is simply just a mediocre bow overall. It's usable as a headstone option for those longer ranges, but that's about it. Moving on, we're going to climb up to B tier, and although potentially controversial, this is where I'll be placing the Duality Pulse New Purpose. New Purpose finds itself in a very unique situation, as one of the only, if not the only, kinetic option that can roll with adaptive munitions, making it a jack of all trades, master of none, in the match game department. Aside from that though, I don't really care too much for this weapon, I may be alone in this, but high impact pulses just feel so freaking sluggish inside a PvE, which results in me just avoiding them regardless of the perk pool. And New Purpose has quite the perk pool to be fair, obviously adaptive munitions which we just spoke about, but also Perpetual or Frenzy combined with Desperado and Headstone, among other options. The perks are pretty damn great, but I just can't get over how the feeling of this pulse is. So for me, I'm gonna have to put it in the B tier, but depending on who you ask from a more objective standpoint, it definitely could pass as an A tier weapon. Speaking of A tier weapon though, let's talk about our next A tier weapon, the No Reprieve. This plunder shotgun has honestly replaced Heritage for me and I absolutely love it. No Reprieve makes it splash in the slug shotgun world by ticking off all the boxes that you could want in a slug shoddy. Ammo economy? Check, it rolls with triple tap. Damage output? Check, it rolls with focus fury. Easy god roll? Check, it's craftable. And stasis synergy? Well, check, it's super easy to boost damage even further with font of might. If you don't already have one crafted, I recommend doing so. This is one of the top picks for that kinetic slot, and although we're not in a crazy slug shotgun meta like we used to be, you may never know when you will need this thing in the future. While on the topic of past metas, let's talk about our next B tier weapon for the video, the Palmyra B Rocket Launcher. There was a time at the beginning of Witch Queen where you would never find a fire team without this thing. It was one of the first weapons you could ever craft, dealt top tier damage, has built in tracking, and perk combinations that appeal to any kind of player. Then Bungie decided to balance the rocket launcher archetypes, and Palmyra proceeded to take a back seat to other options like Hothead. Palmyra nowadays isn't a bad rocket, it's still very usable, but that precision archetype nerf definitely hurt it, so it'll reside in the B tier for now. Up next, we're finally going to talk about our next sidearm for the video, and that'll be the Peace Bond, which will reside in the B tier. I really wish I could have gotten a good roll on this thing like forever ago, because it genuinely is a kick-ass weapon whenever you're running casual content. Subsistence Headstone is the roll that you want, and combining this with it being a 3 burst archetype and you got yourself a pretty damn good sidearm. Unlike Cryosthesia, this one won't cost you an exotic slot, so maybe give it a go if you have one collecting dust in your vault, as I really wish that I could, but as you can see in the gameplay in the background, I haven't had a P-spawn in a while, let alone an even good one. Moving on, we have yet another B-tier weapon here in the form of the Percy's D Hockey Scout Rifle. Similarly to other weapons in this video, Percy's is a victim to the archetype that it's in, that being the high impact frame. It actually gets really nice perks like rapid at explosive or shoot to loot explosive, but can definitely feel pretty damn sluggish. I'd mainly recommend using this weapon inside of GM content where you'd be keeping your distance a great deal of the time, but even then, I'd just go with about any other scout rifle. That said, Percy's is still good, but its competitors in that kinetic slot definitely have the upper hand due to the archetype that they might be in. Up next, we have our final raid weapon of the video, yet again going into B tier, and we have the Quillum's Terminus. And I promise that after this weapon, we'll finally get to something that isn't B tier. This is just kind of how it worked out. Anyways, Quillum's Terminus is a King's Fall machine gun that's rocking a steady 360 RPM and some pretty damn good perks to pair with it. We're talking unrelenting stats for all in the first column, with Wellspring, Firefly, Headstone, and Killing Tally in the second. It's essentially the machine gun version of Ice Luna with unrelenting Headstone, which is pretty cool. Just like all the other B tier weapons though, this weapon is more than serviceable, overall pretty good, but it doesn't really have an element to it that necessarily screams must have to make it A tier worthy. If I want that unrelenting headstone roll, I'll just end up using my Ice Luna. Good machine gun though, but you can't afford to skip out on this one. Finally, making our way out of all the B tiers in a row, we move to another machine gun, but this time in the C tier, the Recurrent Impact. 
This season of Risen Machine Gun, while very nice on paper, is unfortunately just part of an archetype that I cannot get behind. It has good perks like field prep or subsistence alongside one for all and headstone, but hot damn man, I just, I cannot use 900 RPM machine guns. They just feel awful and they eat up way too much ammo for my liking. You may feel completely different, so I will say this, it's 100% a personal opinion kind of rating. I just have never used a 900 and actually enjoyed it. Recurrent Impact has some insane perks for a machine gun, but I just cannot stand the ammo economy and I just can't stand the feel. So I'm gonna have to give it that C tier spot for the video. All right, it's been a hot minute since we've ventured into the S tier. So let's do that right quick and talk about the Reed's Regret. Tras Osiris is a very unfortunate obstacle that you must climb in order to get your hands on this weapon, but once you do end up landing the role you want, you're in for a treat as the owner of one of the best linears for raid content. With the Witch Queen's release of Reeds, we retreated to the Vice Stinger Origin trait, which is just disgusting on this weapon, as you'll see in the gameplay in the background, as if you're lucky enough, you'll literally never have to reload during damage phases. On the occasion that you do, however, Triple Tap is there to keep you from doing so as often as possible, while also feeding you extra ammo. Firing Line is there to make sure you have a 20% damage buff during the damage phases, and with this weapon being Stasis, font stacking via Supreme Wellmaker is as easy as it's gonna get. And since we're sitting nice and comfy at the S tier, why not take a deep dive all the way down to trash and talk briefly about the Salvation's Grip. Listen, I'm just gonna keep it real, this weapon serves no practical use in combat and is only fun to mess around with if you're wanting to break outside the map and explore. Salvation's Grip was essentially just made to introduce the idea of stasis and be used in like two quests. It's a trash tier meme exotic and that's just about it unfortunately. Going on over to something different for the tier list, we have an event exclusive hand cannon in the form of the C tier something new. Not gonna lie, this hand cannon truly had a lot of potential when we first heard that we were getting a stasis hand cannon for Solstice. The whole community was wondering, man, how do you make a stasis hand cannon that isn't Ice Luna interesting? Well, apparently Bungie never learned the answer to this question because something new is something dull. It can roll with Wellspring Demo or Wellspring Headstone, but overall the weapon feels terrible given that it's a 120 RPM, it has abysmal reload speed, and an incredibly small magazine. In my opinion, the best way to rival a weapon like Ice Luna while sticking to being a stasis hand cannon would be to give one explosive payload paired with Headstone, and this would kind of be like Fatebringer with Explosive Firefly. Unfortunately, that's something we didn't get, and therefore something new resides in the mediocre C tier. Sticking with the C tier, let's move along and talk about the Suros Pulse Rifle, Syncopation 53. Mediocre is the name of the game yet again, but Syncopation exists inside a mediocre archetype with very mediocre perks, so it's pretty fitting. An adaptive frame with Outlaw Frenzy or Outlaw Headstone, how exciting. Seriously though, it genuinely just isn't that special level weapon. A perfect example of an adaptive frame done right would be the Smite of a Rain, but Syncopation plays it safe with nothing really extraordinary on the table, plus it's kind of a starter weapon for crafting, so it kind of makes sense that it'll stay in the C tier. Up next, we have ourselves one of the best adaptive snipers in the game, the Thoughtless, which is going into the B tier. Give Bungie a chance to buff snipers though, and Thoughtless may quickly become A, maybe even S tier, depending on how the sandbox team decides to tweak them in the future. Thoughtless is a fantastic pick inside day one raid scenarios, where ammo may become a scarcity and you need a reliable form of damage once you're all out. That said, day one raid scenarios happen twice a year at most, and outside of them, any sniper that isn't an aggressive or is a Nagis just doesn't really get that used. That said, Thoughtless will remain in B tier due to the insane perk combinations it can get, coupled with it like Reeds being a super easy weapon to use Font of Might with inside DPS scenarios with Supreme Wellmaker. Okay, finally, this deep into the video, let's play something into the D tier, and that weapon will be the Typhon GL5. You guys already know, heavy grenade launchers simply just are not that great inside Destiny, and haven't been since what, like the Shadowkeep era? They just haven't really been a real option outside of very niche situations in recent memory, which is kind of sad because I'd very much enjoy anything that isn't the current linear meta. Typhon can get some okay perks in the form of Impulse Amplifier and Explosive Light, but Full Court would have been a much more desirable pick as it won't cap out after 6 stacks and can continue to provide 25% extra damage after those shots. Had this GL rolled with Full Court, I may have bumped it up by one, but heavy GLs in general are just extremely underwhelming, so D tier seems very fitting as it's just a bad weapon given the meta. 
Getting around to our second of the last weapon for the video, let's finally talk about the Volpecula, which is going into C tier. Volpecula walked so Aes Luna could run, as it was the first stasis hand cannon to make its way to D2. But unfortunately, it's a 180 RPM, and you really don't need me to say much else from there. It ended up rolling with some pretty good perks, however. Shoot to loot or outlaw combined with headstone or explosive is actually pretty damn good, but 180 hand cannons just don't really do it for much of us in the community. The only 180 I can think of with a somewhat positive response is the posterity from DSC, and even then, that weapon is pretty niche among players. So, Volpecula, it might have been C tier, you know, given a few seasons ago, but Ice Luna now exists, and Volpecula really has no reason to be in your hands. Now, finally, 5,000 words and 20 pages later into the script that I'm writing at 2 in the morning, we come to our final weapon of the video, the Sword from the Dawning, Zephyr, which will go in the D tier. Listen, I know some of you may really like this sword because it rolls with cold steel, and don't get me wrong, I think it's a pretty unique and cool sword because of that. I even got cold steel unrelenting as the perk roll on mine. But in practice, Cold Steel just sorta of feels like ass. Just a full-on gimmick perk that doesn't really see too much use. Plus, in a world where we have Guillotine, Lament, and Eager Swords, Zephyr really has no room to breathe in the sandbox, so D-tier it shall go, and D-tier it shall stay. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for today's video. Super sorry for not uploading in the last week, but given how big today's video was, I hope you can all understand. Also, for those that still don't know yet, even though I haven't posted in a while, content on YouTube is still happening, as we've been streaming three to four times a week for the past two weeks, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. And by the way, you guys can see any of my previous streams by just looking at the front page of my channel. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'm sure there will be a lot of differing opinions in the comment section, so definitely feel free to give your own input in regards to the weapons featured in today's list. Anyways, as always, thank you all so much for watching the content up until this point, as it goes a long way to support the channel. And before we end off, shout out to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members that you can see on screen here. With special thanks to my tier 2 patrons being Onrock, Admus, Vile, John, Noel, Homebase, Serenity, Boomer Noob, and Don Sheagle, as well as my tier 3 patrons being Austin, Cinco, and Galumia. Also, a huge thanks that have gone the extra mile to supporting the live streams here on YouTube by becoming tier 2 members, and those people are Peak, Hank the Tank, Ben McClellan, Brian, Angel, Mayhem Gaming, as well as Austin and Serenity once more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.